So Netflix be pumping these movies out like a mother in a TLC show. But I mean, when they give you premises like a bunch of bank robbers go to rob a bank and the vault ends up being haunted, of course it's going to be a stream it. Let me explain. So you got this family that decides to go in and uh, rob a bank after setting a fire as a distraction. Pensatucky over here is the first to cause a commotion to distract people, while Clint Eastwood's daughter is pretending to get a job. The brothers even come in as firefighters, which I think is super dope since I believe every good heist movie needs a good heist costume. But after Ladder 49 invades the bank and they only collect 70 grand, they start bopping people. And I'll say this. I know that everyone who's in this type of situation, they always want to be a hero, but this dude trying to fight them, this dude trying to run away, I mean, these dudes got freaking axes and guns. I might have to help them out, make sure that everything transitions smoothly in order for me to live, and then take a break from my troubles. Anna Kendrick 2.0 then comes across James Franco and his mustache, who informs them that there is a secret vault in the basement with six million dollars. They go to check it out only to realize that they're actually being manipulated and all of a sudden the security room footage turns into five nights at freaking Freddy's. My dude down there starts playing Luigi's Mansion in VR before getting killed. Action Bronson is watching the hostages before he gets attacked by the demons and then Daryl finds his bro torturing himself and he has to tell him, Yo, that ain't what mama meant when she said get it through your head. At this point, we're informed that in 1982, for those who were confused, there was a robbery by Phantom of the Opera over here who forced all of the hostages to reenact the Belko experiment. By the end of it, there were no survivors, the robber was never found, and, um, well, they just all became ghosts. Here's what people forget when you rush a movie like this, right? Sometimes your logic don't make sense. Like I get that ghosts can mess with frequencies, right? So that call that Franco made back in 82, hence the stat she has, continues to be relayed to this day on the radio because of ghost frequencies. But imagine if ghost Franco made the call on a lazy Sunday afternoon when nothing was happening and then the cops come in guns blazing. On top of that, James Franco was also a hostage in 82, but I guess since he's got top billing, he gets to look human. Meanwhile, every other innocent civilian goes crazy. I think it's an interesting premise, right? To have a haunted bank, but you still gotta follow some rules. I mean, what's this dude doing outside of his jurisdiction at the end of the movie just to get a jump scare? He ain't in the bank. Why would the hostages who this guy killed also be helping him in the afterlife if he put him there? Why does this girl look like the cheese in a cup girl from Corey in the house? At the end, you just realize that you should never rob a bank because you'll die by the end of it, or worse, have to deal with demons. But the biggest lesson that we learned from this is that even though Netflix can acquire Seth Rogen, they should acquire some more writers. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. There's a there's a bunch of Netflix movies, so if there's any ones you want to recommend, let me know down below in the comment section. This was one that you guys were asking for. I'm a man of the people. I listened. I like the movie. Even if it don't make any sense whatsoever. Even if James Franco was like literally looking at his script throughout the movie. That's why he was in one place. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll send someone a free Netflix subscription. Why not?